Welcome to our Monday English lesson for week 3. Good morning class. Today is Monday, the 2nd of August 2021. Let's make it a great day. Do you remember what you've learned about last week? We learned about the life cycle of a frog. Life cycle. That means the different stages of growing up. We've learned that a frog has four stages in its life cycle. The egg stage, the tadpole stage, the froglet stage, and the adult frog stage. We know what happens in each of these stages. Today, we will learn more interesting facts. Are you ready? We have spoken about groups of animals in class. And those groups were mammals and birds. Now, we are talking about frogs. Do you remember the name of the group that a frog belongs in? Frogs are amphibians. Frogs are cold-blooded vertebrates. Cold-blooded means that their body temperature depends on whether it is cold or hot outside. Vertebrates means that it has a backbone. It has a skeleton inside its body. The first stage in the life cycle of a frog is the egg stage. Remember, eggs have jelly around it which protect the eggs on the inside. A female frog lays a lot of eggs at one time in a pond. The eggs float on water in a jelly mass or cluster. A group of eggs is called a frog spawn. Frog eggs hatch anywhere from 3 to 25 days after they are laid. The eggs hatch into tadpoles. On the screen right now, you are able to see a picture of a frog spawn. Remember, a frog spawn is a group of eggs. Now, a picture of two tadpoles is on the screen. Remember, a tadpole has a head and a tail. Remember, learners, Tadpoles have gills which help them to breathe underwater. Tadpoles eat small water plants. During the final stages, the tadpole's mouth changes from a small mouth at the front of the head, as you can see in the picture, to a large mouth as wide as the head. They usually do not have arms or legs until they change to adulthood. That is when they become an adult frog. They have a large flattened tail, as you can see in the picture, with which they swim by moving it side to side, similar to most fish. So its tail helps the tadpole to swim. And in the picture, you can see a small mouth at the front of the head. But as time goes by, the mouth grows as wide as the head. On page 3 in your work pack, you have an activity to complete. You need to label each stage by using the words in the word bank provided. So you need to look at each picture and write the correct name of each stage in the spaces provided. Let us begin our phonics. 
A with magic E. As you know, there are many words which have A with magic E phonic in it. Let us say the words below. Late, rake, cane, maid, cape, pain, lake, fake, gate. Now, let us try making sentences with two of these words. The first word I will choose is gate. And my sentence will be, there was a black and white cat by the gate. As you can see, learners, I did not forget my capital letter at the beginning of the sentence and my full stop at the end. The next word I will choose is pain. The window pane broke when the boy kicked a ball through the window. On page 3 and 4 in the work pack, you will find a phonics activity. The phonic, remember, is A with magic E. You need to make your own sentences with the words provided below. The words are make, bake, and take. You need to make one sentence for each word. Let us go over the grammar skills which we have learned so far. We have learned about full stops and capital letters. When do we use full stops? We use a full stop to end a sentence. When do we use capital letters? We use a capital letter when we write the word I. We use a capital letter when we begin a sentence. We use a capital letter when we write the names of people, places, days of the week, and months of the year. Okay, learners, now that we have gone through our rules of where to place capital letters and full stops, let us now do a few examples together. We will go through these few sentences and identify places where we would put a capital letter and a full stop. Our first example is the sentence. We have fun at the beach. The first place we would put our capital letter is at the beginning of our sentence, the letter W in the word we. We will then continue with our sentence, have fun at the beach. Is there anywhere else we need a capital letter? No. So what goes at the end of the sentence? A full stop. And this is how our sentence would look with a capital letter and a full stop. The next example is, my name is Mary. Our first capital letter would go at the beginning of the sentence. The letter M in the word my. We would continue with our sentence. Name is Mary. Mary is the name of a person. So that means the letter M in the word Mary would be a capital letter. And what would you put at the end of the sentence? A full stop. And this is how our sentence would look with capital letters and a full stop. Our next example is I live in Silver Glen. Our first capital letter would be at the beginning of the sentence, the letter I. We continue with our sentence, live in Silver Glen. Silver Glen is the name of a place. So that means the letter S in the word Silver Glen would be a capital letter. And what goes at the end of the sentence? A full stop. And this is how our sentence would look with capital letters and a full stop. Our last sentence. 
can you tell me where to place my capital letter? At the beginning of the sentence, the letter M in the word my. And we would continue with writing our sentence. Mum's birthday is in June. June is the name of a month. So which letter would be a capital letter? The letter J in the word June. And what goes at the end of the sentence? A full stop. And this is how our sentence would look with capital letters and a full stop. On page 4 in our work pack, we have a grammar skills activity. You need to rewrite the following sentences correctly by using capital letters and full stops in the correct places. You need to remember the different places we use a capital letter in. Let us read the following sentences together. Number 1. I saw a picture of Nelson Mandela in Cape Town. Number two, my father goes to the pavilion to do shopping for Christmas. Number three, our family lives in Johannesburg. I will visit them in October. Learners, today we will be learning about pronouns. Pronouns are words which can be used to replace nouns. Nouns are naming words. So today we will be learning about the pronouns he and she. If we talk about a girl or a boy, instead of writing sentences like the girl is happy, the girl goes to the park, the girl plays with a dog, what do you notice about these sentences? It has the words, the girl, in all of them. If we look at the second column, let us read those sentences. The boy likes to play soccer. The boy is happy. The boy drinks water. What do you notice about this set of sentences, children? It has the words, the boy, in all of them. Now, the word she can be used instead of saying the girl continuously. And the word he can be used instead of saying the boy continuously. So let us try reading the following sentences by using pronouns. The girl is happy. We will start off by saying the girl so that in the rest of the sentences we will know that we are talking about the girl. The next sentence will be, she goes to the park. She plays with her dog. This way, the sentences do not sound too similar. Let us read the second column. The boy likes to play soccer. He is happy. He drinks water. This is how we can use pronouns in our sentences. On page 4 in the work pack, you have a pronouns activity. You have to fill in the word she or he in the sentences below. You have to read the sentences and find out if it is a boy or a girl. Remember, if it's a girl, you will be using the word she. If it is a boy, you will be using the word he. Let us read the sentences together. Ben sang a song. Mm is happy. Jill won the race. Mm is the winner. Dave wants a bike. Mm likes to ride bikes. Cammy has a new bag. Mm loves it. Remember children, if you see a full stop, that means that the next word is going to start with a capital letter. Today we will be learning more about building sentences. A full sentence needs a subject. 
A subject tells us who or what the sentence is about. A full sentence also needs a verb or an adjective. A verb, remember, is an action word and an adjective is a describing word. So, this part of the sentence tells us what the subject does or is. So, let us look at the following sentences and find out which part of the sentence is the subject and which part of the sentence is the verb or adjective. Mrs. Winter is our teacher. Which part of the sentence is telling us who the person is? Mrs. Winter. And which part of the sentence is telling us what she does? The rest of the sentence is our teacher. The boys played with the ball. Which part of the sentence is telling us who? The boys. And which part of the sentence is telling us what they are doing? Played with the ball. Our cat was napping. Which part of the sentence is telling us what? Our cat. And which part of the sentence is telling us what it is doing? It was napping. Good. Let's go on to the last one. The bus was late to school. Now, children, which part of the sentence is telling us what the sentence is about? The bus. The bus is the subject. And now, which part of the sentence is telling us what the subject does? Was late to school. Now, children, do you see the subject part of our sentence and the verb part or the adjective part of our sentence? Now, remember, when we write sentences, we must know which part of our sentence is a subject and which part of the sentence is our verb or adjective. This will help us to build sentences. Now, when we try to build sentences, we can also think of the following which will help us. The words we need to think of are who, what, where. So our sentences needs to tell us who, what and where. Let us make a sentence about fruits using these words. I eat fruits at school. So, which part of the sentence is telling me who? The word I. Which part of the sentence is telling me what? What am I doing? Eat fruits. And which part of the sentence is telling me where? Where am I eating fruits, learners? At school. So, as you can see, building sentences is not hard. You just have to think about it. You can do it. We know you can. So, you must always try to do your best. And we cannot wait to read your interesting sentences. Let us try to write sentences about our favorite activity to do with our family. In order to think of these sentences, we can answer these questions. Who is in your family? Who does the activity with you? What activity do you like to do with your family? When do you do the activity with your family? What do you need to use for the activity? 
And what is the best weather for your activity? Now, let us try to build a word bank by answering the questions above. So, for each question, I'm going to get a word. And therefore, I'm going to build a word bank. So, my first question is, who is in your family? Who does the activity with you? We have the words dad and mom. The second question says, what activity do you like to do with your family? And we have build sand castles. The next question says, when do you do the activity with your family? And in the word bank it says, every time we go to the beach. The next question says, what do you need to use for the activity? In the word bank, we have the words bucket and spade. And the last question is, what is the best weather for your activity? And we have the word sunny. So children, do you see how I've made a word bank? By, just by answering the questions. Now, by using the words in the word bank, we will build sentences. Remember, this is our word bank. So, my first sentence. It can be, my dad and mom are in my family. The second sentence I can make is, our favorite activity is to build sand castles. My next sentence can be, we build sand castles every time we go to the beach. My next sentence can be, we use a bucket and spade to build sand castles. And my last sentence can be, we build sand castles on sunny days. On page 5 in your work pack, we have a creative writing activity. You need to write 3 to 5 sentences about your favorite activity to do with your family. You can describe the activity. How does it make you feel? When did you do this activity with your family? Learners, you may also use the questions provided on the slide to help you write your own sentences. You may use the word bank below to help you build your own sentences. The, the word bank contains activities that you could write about. Riding my bike, going on vacations, eating my favorite food, visiting family, playing board games, cooking, baking, watching a movie, playing outdoors. You may also write about your own activity if you can think of one that is not in the word bank. Remember children, you can use your red dictionary or you may use your English reader to help you with different words which you can use in your sentences. The next activity on page 5 in the work pack, you need to draw a picture of yourself doing your favorite activity with your family. Now this activity needs to match your sentences. So if you're talking about riding your bike, then you may draw a picture of you riding your bike with your family. If you writing sentences about watching a movie, then you can draw a picture of you and your family watching a movie. So, I am really excited to see your wonderful sentences. I hope you enjoyed this creative writing lesson.
it is time for our shared reading lesson the story for this week is called dan has a bad week i will first read the story to you dan has a bad week he woke up late on monday he missed the bus and was late for school why are you late dan asked his teacher on tuesday dan woke up very early so that he would not miss the bus again but poor dan left his school bag on the bus when he came into class he only had his soccer ball where is your school bag dan asked his teacher on wednesday Dan woke up on time. I must not forget my bag today, he thought as he got onto the bus. He held onto his bag for the entire bus ride. He rode and rode, but Dan was on the wrong bus. The bus took him to the wrong school. Where is Dan today? asked his teacher. We will continue with the story learners but first let us read the slide together I will read and then you will read Dan has a bad week He woke up late on Monday He missed the bus and was late for school. Why are you late, Dan? asked his teacher. Learners, can you see a question mark? So when you read this you must read it as a question. Why are you late there? Let us continue reading the story. On Tuesday Dan woke up very early so that he would not miss the bus again. but poor dan left his school bag on the bus when he came into class he only had his soccer ball where is your school bag dan asked his teacher remember learners the question mark so you read it as a question and at the end of the sentence is a full stop so that means you must stop wait for a while then continue let us continue reading on wednesday Dan woke up on time. I must not forget my bag today. He thought as he got onto the bus. He held onto his bag. for the entire bus ride he rode and rode but dan was on the wrong bus the bus took him to the wrong school Where 
is Dan today? Asked his teacher. Let us continue with the story. I will read first. On Thursday, Dan could not find his uniform. We have swimming on Thursday, Dan thought. So Dan went to school in his swimming costume. Where is your school uniform? asked his teacher. On Friday, Dan woke up very early. He had his uniform on. He clutched his bag and he got onto the right bus. He arrived at school so early it was still dark. I finally did everything right, thought Dan. But poor Dan was so tired he fell asleep in class. Why are you sleeping, Dan? asked his teacher. On Saturday, Dan went to school on time, in his uniform, with his school bag. Okay, learners, you will now read after me. We will begin the story from the top. On Thursday, Dan could not find his uniform. We have swimming on Thursday. Dan thought. So Dan went to school in his swimming costume. Where is your uniform? Asked his teacher. On Friday, Dan woke up very early. He had his uniform on, he clutched his bag, and he got onto the right bus. He arrived at school so early, it was still dark. I finally did everything right, thought Dan. But poor Dan was so tired. He fell asleep in class. Why are you sleeping, Dan? asked his teacher. On Saturday, Dan went to school on time, in his uniform, with his school bag. Let us continue the story. I will read first. Today I will get it right, he thought. I will stay awake all day. But when he reached his school, the school gate was locked. Silly me, there is no school on Saturday, Dan said. On Sunday, Dan went to his cousin's birthday party. He was so excited, he tripped and fell onto the cake. Oh no, Dan thought, what a bad week. I hope that next week will be better. I hope you enjoyed the story, learners. Now it is your turn to read the story with me. Today I will get it right, he thought. I will stay awake all day. But when he reached his school, The school gate was locked. 
Learners, do you see the comma, the small um, line at the bottom of the O by school? That tells us we need to wait for a bit and then continue the sentence. But don't wait too long. Let's continue. Silly me. There is no school on Saturday. Dan said. On Sunday, there's a comma again, so we need to pause for a second and then we will continue. Dan went to his cousin's birthday party. He was so excited, he tripped and fell onto the cake. Oh no, Dan thought. What a bad week. I hope that next week will be better. Well done, learners. If you want, you may read the story again by yourself. I hope you all enjoyed the story. It was very really funny, wasn't it? I hope you enjoy this English lesson and you stay well. I cannot wait to see you again. Take care. Okay, learners, please remember that the work covered today will be revised in activities later this week. And that concludes our English lesson for the day.